Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to draw long wavy fur and for this I'm using the portrait I did of a Cavalier Spaniel and it has quite long fur, wavy fur on its ears so I thought it was a good area on um, to use to show how to create that effect. I've started by using Cold Grey 1 I'm just putting a base layer down um, over the whole area and making sure that there's a, a good layer of pigment to start with. And this is the color I've chosen for the highlights on um, the fur. It has, there's not much warmth in the fur on along the ear for this particular dog. Uh, if you had a dog which had more of a warmer black color, you could choose um, like a warmer gray rather than the cold gray. But this dog, the this part of the fur was quite uh, bluish grey, so you had to sort of get that colour rather than a warm colour. Now I started using with the black pencil, um, just sketching in some of the darker shadows on the fur, and just watching where the shadows are on the reference photo and keeping them in the same areas. You don't have to be exact with fur, but it's good to get them in the generally the right way and make sure that they're not going in the wrong direction and such. Just around the top of the ear where the fur tends to go up and over the ear and it just doesn't fall down loosely in the sort of the same direction. Just making sure that the shadows are dark. I will come through and darken them even further, but for now, just making sure that they're nice, a nice darkness so that when they're blended, they won't lose where all those shadows are. Now at this point, it is a little bit time consuming because you do have to pay attention to your reference photo and watch what all the what's the fur doing and try and sketching them sketch the fur in in the right direction. And that's what there, there was this nice deep shadow on the ear, so I had to make sure that got in nice and dark. I often find when you've got a line drawing, um, it doesn't always help to know where things are. It's things like the darker shadows you can find when you've got the line, the outline sketched in, but you still need to look at your reference photo a lot to make sure that you're putting them in the right spot. It doesn't have to be exact, but you do want it to be fairly close. I'm just trying to get that change in direction of fur looking a bit better at the top there, making sure I've got them going in the right direction. The fur is kind of flicking up over the top of the ear, but then after Below that, it hangs downwards as the rest of the ear, just because it's got quite a long, a long ear. These dogs do, so the fur just falls down and hangs down by their face. And for this one, it is black fur, and I would take the same approach with any color fur for this. Um, Start with the highlight colour and do a base layer of that and then go over with the darkest colour to sketch in where all the shadows are to make sure that they're in the right place. And at this point it doesn't really look like much but it gets better as you add more layers. Now I'm going over with Cold Grey 3, it's a bit of a darker colour. I found that the lighter grey was a bit too light as this side of the face is quite dark. I've gone over with a layer of that. And the more pigment you have down before you blend, the easier it is to blend. So it's always good to get quite a few layers of pencil down before you try blending. And here I am now blending and I've got my 
Teclon Filbert brush and number four, and I've just dipped it in the odorless solvent and I've wiped the excess off of the paintbrush before using it on the paper to blend. And you'll see that I tend to follow the direction of the fur when I do blend. I find that that helps keep the color where you want it rather than um, blending it. Uh, if you go side to side, you'll get those sorts of marks in your pencil because the pigment will get moved in lines. So do follow the direction of the fur when you are blending. Occasionally you can do little circular motions as well um, but to help push the pigment sometimes if the pigment doesn't want to go into a little spot in the paper then you can use that a circular motion to help push the pigment around a bit better. I'm using Kaput Morton Violet to just add a little bit more colour into those dark shadows. Not very much, just a, just a little touch. Just because I do have that violet um, on the rest of the dog and in the background, I wanted to make sure that there was some of that in that fur as well. Even though the fur does have a, a quite a blue sheen to it, I still wanted to have a little bit of that red violet in there. Now going over the fur with the black pencil more, some more, and I do have the pencil very sharp at this point. You've got to watch how sharp your pencils are because you need that really fine tip to get the strands of fur looking really fine. If you've got a blunt tip, those lines are going to be thicker and um, um, more fuzzy as well along the edges. They won't have the hard, crisp edges. You want to make sure that the pencil is really sharp to get that effect. I'm just adding little strands over the hair. I keep calling it hair, but it's fur. But the same sort of technique would work with hair as well. And just making sure that the little strands go over all the sections of their fur to get that effect of the fine fur. Now I'm just going to blend that all out again. And I'll be using less solvent on the brush. With the additional layers, you need less on the brush. You don't always have to dip it in to the um, container to get more solvent. Just see how it goes and then if it needs it, you can add more. But the more layers you get down, the less solvent you actually need. Otherwise, it starts picking up too much pigment and moving it around. You can use that to make an area a bit lighter if you really need to, but it's not the best way to do it. And it can make it look quite splotchy. Now just using the white polychromos pencil. and I often test this pencil, pencil out before going to my luminance pencil because sometimes it has quite a good effect and especially for this where you want the really fine hairs and you want the pencil to be really sharp, it does work better than the luminance pencil which bluntens really easily because it's got a softer lead so it bluntens quicker. So for this, um, I'm using the polychromos one to add in the highlights in the hair and just get that effect of the fine hair going in the waves. Now with wavy hair you do have to pay attention to where the waves are in the hair. So when you sort of think of it like at the ocean where you've got the trough and then the crest of the wave and the crest do, the high point will be where the most light hits the fur whereas the trough part where it dips down will be a lot darker and more shadowed so with wavy hair you can often do sort of shiny a bit and then a darker bit and then a shiny a bit to get the effect of waves in the fur 
just using a little bit of sky blue now to add just a blue tinge to the fur. Just a nice layer over the whole lot. Just helps make that fur look a little bit more blue. And further defining the fur with the black pencil. And again, making sure that's nice and sharp. And I always rotate the pencil regularly in my hand. Uh, that helps keep the tip sharper so you don't have to sharpen it as much. Because when you work on one side of the pencil, it'll blunt in that side. So then you can turn it and then the other side will be sharper. And you can keep doing that back and forth for a fair bit before you have to sharpen it completely. Now for this section, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing all over again. And I do tend to work in sections. I find that if I do too much all at once, it can get overwhelming. So I just work in sections. And in this case, I've tried to keep it to the size of what's on the camera so that it's easier to see and I'm not moving the paper around while I'm trying to video at the same time. So here I'm just doing the base layer of Cold grey one, just putting a nice even layer over the whole area. As you can see, I'm going back over the, over it, so that's actually two layers of that pencil, even maybe a third, just to make sure that it's got nice even coverage of that pigment on the paper. And when you get, make sure you've got a good layer of pigment down first. When using light layers, it helps to when you go to blend because you've got enough pigment on the paper. Now starting with the black and sketching in where all the shadows are. And it can be a bit time consuming this section, as I said before, just pay attention to your reference photo. And often it's the shapes may not look like fur, they just sort of look like abstract shapes in there. There's like darks and lights. And you just pay attention to that. You don't have to think of it as fur. Sometimes that makes it harder because you're trying to make it look like fur when it doesn't look anything like fur. It's just different shapes and you just add those dark shadows in. And pay attention to the areas where you want it to stay light. And make sure you don't cover them in the black pencil. You may be able to see that whisker down the bottom. I've actually gone over it with a white luminance pencil to make sure that it stays white when um, blending it all out. this part of the ear the fur is hanging down in nice waves which made it a little bit more easier down here to figure out what's what where it's closer to the cheek it gets a bit um, messed up and um, the ear fur is a little bit more knotty and harder to figure out where, which direction it's going Along the face, it's also quite dark, so you do have to add quite a fair bit of layers of black in to just get that spot dark enough. I've already added some of those that shadowed area next to the cheek, and 
then the next step will um a little bit later will be to blend the fur next to the ear into that shadowed area to make sure that it looks seamless rather than being um looking like I've coloured at different times like it does at the moment. Now, I'm always using a light pressure, unless I say otherwise, I'll, I'm using a light pressure when I'm drawing. Um, it just helps to be able to add more layers. If you press too hard, you'll damage the tooth of the paper and you won't be able to add as many layers. The way I, I press with using light layers, I can add quite a lot of layers and just keep going back and adding more layers. And there I'd use the Kaput Morton Violet and then now going over the Cold Grey 3 to darken it a bit more. And these different layers of grey just help add more pigment onto the page to make the blending a lot easier. And while you can't really see where I had used the lighter grey, that pigment is still on the paper and that still helps to blend. If you don't have enough pigment on the paper, when you go to blend it just is really difficult and the blending just doesn't work like it should and you have to use a lot more more ble of the solvent to blend now blending once again I'm just using the same brush the size 4 filbert it's just a repeat of what I did on the upper section of the year I'm just blending it all in making sure that it goes into all the white crevices of the paper because yeah. that's one of the things I don't like with colored pencil artwork is when you can see the little white flecks of paper other people like it but for me personally it bugs me <laughs> so I always try and get rid of all those little flecks of white paper that you can see when you got the text when you can see the texture of the paper through it the artwork that's one of those things that just doesn't I just don't like it with with my own artwork, it's it's different when I'm viewing other people's artwork because they've got their own techniques and it always looks beautiful. But with my own artwork, I just feel the need to get rid of all those little white flecks of paper. <laughs> And now that's all blended out, just waiting for it to dry a little bit before starting on the next layer. And you do have to wait for it to dry because if you start straight away, you can damage the paper a bit. So you do just give it a few moments. It doesn't take very long to dry. And you can just get going. Sharpen your pencils while you wait. <laughs> now using black pencil to sketch in those shadows again. I'm still paying attention to the reference photo. Well, at this point you can pay attention to what you've already got down on the paper. You just want to make sure that you don't accidentally cover something when you're supposed to leave it a lighter colour. Now, I know a lot of artists say to work from dark to light with coloured pencils and I do do that a lot. I also find that in some cases, like in this one, it's actually easier to work from dark to light. So, yeah, start with, well, I always put the base colour of the highlight down, but um, I then go shadows and then I work up through to the highlights using the luminance pencils because they're quite opaque. Or in this case, the polychromos whites working perfectly for what I want to do. Just a little bit of sky blue there to make that fur look a little bit blue. 
and you can use different colors for that you don't need to do a blue you could do a violet you could do um, a reddish tinge to it it doesn't need to be blue it depends on what your reference photo is blending it all out again following the fur lines with the brush You can see where the whiskers have stayed white where I put the luminance pencil down first. I'll clean them up a bit afterwards as well. But you can see how well that protected it from the blending. I'm just using the white polychromos again to add the highlights in. added an extender onto the end of it because I always find if you don't put extenders on pencils it gets quite hard to get the right pressure of, on the pencil when you're working so if you've got a short pencil put an extender on it it makes it so much better Now with the white pencil, I am pressing a bit harder than I usually would just to make sure that it does um, come down quite nice and opaque. When it's sharp, you, it makes it a lot easier to get that line without having to press hard. But once it starts blunt, getting a little bit blunt, then you have to press a bit harder. Just adding little fine hairs in there from the face as well. In this one, I'm not too worried about the first dang white. So that's why the polychromos white works so well. You don't need to have the luminance pencil. If you wanted it more white, I would be then using the luminance white pencil. And just make sure to rotate the pencil regularly to keep that point um, sharp so you're getting fine lines. Now coming back over with the black, I'm just darkening up the, some of the spots. Not, not too hard, just doing a light layer. And the black can go over the white line to so add in a little shadow on that line. And adding sort of how I talked before about the crests and the troughs of the waves. So you're adding shadows in on the troughs, on the deep parts of the waves, just to get that effect of the hair going up and down. Now for the last part of the year, it's just a rinse and repeat of the sections I've already done before. But just so you can see how it's done, I'll show it as well. So just putting a layer down of the cold grey one. And you see I'm being a little bit messy. I've gotten to the last bit of the portrait, so I'm like, oh, I just want to finish this bit. But I've got to go back over it and make sure that that layer is nice and even. Even though it's the last section, you can't rush through. You gotta, you gotta do it right. So by this point in a portrait, you always sort of feel like, oh, gotta get to the end. We're almost there. Just this last bit. Now using the black pencil to sketch in where all the shadows are. Well, this section of the year is quite dark, so it ends up not being as many highlights as the other parts on the ear. I'm just making sure I get some little hairs sort of going over the white fur so that it 
I'm not trying to blend that into the white fur at this point. It, there's actually a distinct black fur, white fur edge. As before, just pay attention to your reference photo just to make sure that you are getting the shadows in the right spot. Even in this section where it's mostly just dark and black, I've still got to make sure that those shadows are in the right spots and I'm not going to draw over the spots which need to be left light. I'll make sure I'm getting the line still going in the right direction. Because even if it is a dark shadow, you can still see the faint texture of the fur in those shadows. So you've got to make sure that you get that still right. And going over it with a cold grey three. Just to darken it all up a little bit more. And put Morton Violet again on the darker shadow. A bit more in this section because there is a lot of a darker shadow. So that's a very light layer over the black. And that pencil is really great for shadows. So put Morton Violet. I use it on virtually every portrait I do. Just blending it all out again. I'm using a fair bit of the solvent on the brush this time. Probably need to have removed a bit more of the excess then. It was pushing the pigment around a little bit. Still trying. Got to remind myself not to rush what I'm doing. Just to just to get on with it and take my time. So easy to rush the last little bit. And that's one of the things you do when you rush is you just use a little bit too much pigment, a little bit too much solvent, I mean, and you can mess it up a bit by remove because it pushes the pigment around and it can mess it up and make it splotchy. So just got to be careful of that. So don't rush it by using too much solvent. I have to make a note note of that, <laughs> especially with these last sections. I'm just going over in the black again, darkening up those shadows and getting those fur strokes. As you can see, I'm actually been using quite long fur um, pencil strokes on the ear. That's because that this is long fur. Uh, when you're doing short fur, you want to keep those strokes quite short because otherwise the fur won't look like short fur, it'll look long. Whereas with long fur, you use long pencil strokes and it makes it good because you can get those nice big long curves going with the pencil strokes to get that effect for the long wavy fur. And those little fur, fur lines that where it overlaps the white fur. 
to make it obvious that there's a separate section there. Making sure my pencil's nice and sharp as well. Let's layer of the sky blue again. Now a lot of these colors, colors you look at it and you can't actually pick them out, but you add them because it does enhance the picture. Like if you don't add the put mortem violet and you don't add the sky blue, it the black will just end up looking flat. Whereas if you add those colors, it'll make it look a lot better. Just one of those little things, and they're just light layers, so you're not putting much pressure, but it just enhances the colour there. Another layer of blending. So very close to the end now, <laughs> but still got to do the highlights. Now, again with the light polychrome moss. And here I've made sure it's nice and sharp. Making sure that those little wavy lines go in the right direction. If you do have the odd fur going in the wrong way, you can get away with it, with fur, because fur is often quite messy, but you do have to get the majority of them going the right way. Even there, had a few strokes that on the reference photo were sort of going in odd directions. I added them. You can always change your mind and remove them if you think at the end. You just put a little bit of the darker colour over the top of the white fur, of the white highlight if you find that you don't like the way it looks. And that is it. That's how I created the long wavy fur with polychromous pencils. And I have done two other long tutorials on how to do the eyes for this portrait as well as the nose. So check them out if you're interested. And I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to draw long wavy fur. See you next time.